Yeah. You talk about you talk about health uh on your you talk about health all the time, but on your Twitter too. Uh and then you talk you particularly reference the COVID nineteen pandemic. Um you speak out about uh, the briefings uh, centered on prevention. Can you talk about what you think is missing from the coronavirus briefings? Because I know you got an opinion on this. Yeah, it's a bunch of shit missing from that shit. Um, where I'm going to go? Well, like preventative eating, you know what I mean, for sure. Because if, if a virus, because like I'm, I'm heavy in the health, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a doctor. I have no kind of degrees, but a degree doesn't define what kind of information that you have, you know what I mean? But if if a virus is claimed to attack your immune system mm. and and to destroy cells, any good cells in any shape, form, or fashion, it should be at the top of the list to explain and describe what you should consume to have your body at optimum capacity. So your shit is strong and a virus might not be as susceptible to fucking you up. It's just common sense to me, like one, two. So the simple fact that the preventative measures is wear a surgical mask that really don't do shit and do this and do this and do this. And none of it has to do with eating and the shit that at the end of the day keeps your body strong or destroys it. That shit doesn't make any sense. Got gotcha. you. Um, what's the most difficult exercise for a fat guy like me to do? I mean, what you can, what you consider difficult, like something where you can't, you can't do it or it gets you out of breath. It's a well, lot of different things. Well, yeah, get, it's going to get me out of breath. Because, I mean, I know you be doing the, the pull-ups. You be doing this shit like the bartenders. You got, I seen you doing this shit with one arm. and So that shit I obviously can't do. But, like, if you working me out, because I see your videos and you be putting cats through hell, especially, <laughs> especially Mooch. I see you be giving Mooch hell. And... <laughs> You put up the meme and shit with the with the big dude running up on the dude on your IG, and you're like, "This I be when I when Mooch ain't handling his business or some shit like that." So, what is the thing that's giving Mooch the problems? I mean, I ain't gonna front like yo. Matter of fact, let me salute the Mooch now. Like this is the first. This is two weeks that he been two weeks straight ain't missed a day. But like, okay, Mooch, you know, yeah, Mooch been doing this fucking thing, but um. I say like uh conditioning shit, like burpees type shit. Oh, uh, burpees. Nah, man, yeah. shit like that. that I can do like four it. of them. I can do four burpees right now. Yeah, four. No that's fucks. it. That's it. That's it. I that can mean, do four. That mean you. That mean you got eight though. Oh, see, that's that <laughs> trainer shit. That's that's, that's, <laughs> that's when I be. That's when I leave out the gym or wherever we working out at. You say, oh, you got. It. And no, but real talk though, I did have a dude work me out before a few years ago. I was down for a minute, and um, I was trying to lose some weight, and dude was putting it to me, and uh, I, it was a mile track. And when I first got out there, I could only do maybe a quarter of that track in like a month and a half. I was doing that track six times, no problem. You know Yo, I mean? that's that's what it's about. Like that's why working out is like imperative to me, and I never turn my back on it because the same shit you said. Exercise taught me like progression. Mm -hmm. it, it taught me like consistency. Like yo, you're not gonna get it the first day, the first week. If you want to see results and whatever. Keep fucking going, and that's what exercise and really like to stain my brain with. And you know what it really was? I'm in the dorm and shit, and they was like, it was like I, they said, "Yo, he gonna do uh, he gonna go around there six times." They was all like, "No, nah, I don't believe it," and they was all wanting to bet whatever's in their box. They trying to bet honey buns, whatever they trying to bet. And I'm yeah. like, in my mind, I'm like, I don't know if I could do this, but I said I'm gonna do it with confidence in front of everybody. So when I went out there, I was either gonna do it six times, I was gonna die trying to do that. Um, and it was dudes on the sideline when I'm running, like my third lap dude was like, oh, I know you can't do it. You know what I mean? And I'm still like running fifth, fifth lap. He like, Oh, you ain't going to make it. And I'm like, I almost really died out there. I crossed the fucking finish line and I went in them niggas boxes. That's what I do. Nope. You know what I mean? No question. No question, man. And that was a few years ago. So I need to get back to the, you inspire me when I watch you because you, you do put in the fucking work. Yo, whoever you be with, who is the dude with the, is the dude with the, the beard, a taller dude? Is he the one that do the regimen for y'all, put it all together? Y'all was out in the yeah, park with him? He, 
he definitely my main trainer. That's that's luck. That's lucky. You know what I mean? Easy work fitness. He from Rochester. Yeah, he he the real fucking deal, man. He's definitely the real deal. Super knowledgeable and he push you. You know what I mean? He ain't one of them soft trainers to be like, ah, right, yo, you do five of these, two sets, stretch a little and go home. Hell no. Hell no. Yeah. And then I saw you doing, I don't know what they call that. Were you, what is it called? A crab walk? When you be damn near on your belly, like crawling across the grass and shit? Listen, I, I ain't want to talk about them shit. <laughs> Woo! Woo! I saw you doing that. I almost wanted to turn it off. It looked obscene to me. Like, I don't, how could you make a human being do something? I'm thinking of myself doing something like that, knowing I wouldn't be able to make it. Um, Are you writing a cookbook? Yeah, hell yeah. All right, talk to me about the cookbook. Hell yeah, you know what I'm saying? We may, I'm making a, um, a plant-based, you know what I'm saying? More so like an alkaline plant-based book for anybody that want to get into it, you know what I'm saying? Just to um replace everything that is, like, proved to be fucked up. Like, live, like I used to eat meat and all that shit. I don't eat it no more, but, like, it's proven that meat can fuck you up. Like you can't eat raw meat. If you cook if you cook meat, it'll fuck you up if you eat too much of it. You know what I'm saying? It's replacements for the shit. So like a oyster mushroom with the proper flour, with the proper seasoning, it'll emulate fucking chicken wings. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's a book to replace all the shit that we even fell in love with on the American diet and it's the plant based way so niggas could be healthy and shit. You know what I mean? I need you to run that cookbook to me when you get it. If you got, you said mushrooms that taste like chicken wings. Yo, yo, listen, the oyster mushrooms, I fried them up, put the little spell flour in there, the onion powder, Himalayan sea salt, little bit of dill, little bit of African bird pepper. You won't know the difference. Same hey, texture, damn. crisp, all of that you shit. You said I won't know the difference. You won't know the difference, B. Well, I'm telling you, son. man. What? Let, just go ahead and D, shoot me the recipe on the DM because I'm gonna do. It. I'm <laughs> I gonna got do it. you. And it better taste like chicken, goddamn. Yo, give it to man. Hey, um, well, let me get to this real quick. Who who came up with with stupid the the hoodies? S T U U P I D. That's just something you came up with. Yeah, I I started repetitiously like saying the shit. On accident, you know what I mean? Like, out of anger when I was just getting my point across. And then I'm like, yo, I might as well stamp this shit, you know what I'm saying? Because that's just what it felt like. Well, you know everybody that come on this show, I'll be thirsting them about the uh, merch to this day. Still haven't received a hoodie from none of y'all dudes I interviewed. <laughs> What's... Oh, no, nah, I got I to gotta break that. Uh, I got to break that, Shane. I got you. You oh, so you got, I need a 3X stupid hoodie. And the black, you think you got a black joint with the orange? Yeah, I'm going to get you the yo-yo, moot shit. I got you, man. Just give me the address. I'm, I'm going to get, you the, I'm gonna get you the address. It's confidential. I'm going to give you the address. You, you, and, and just don't tell nobody where I'm at because we ain't doing that just yet. But I'm definitely going to hit you with, hit, get, get you the address because I, I want to promote y'all shit. I want to, you see, I'm, you know what I mean? You see what I'm doing? I promote the shit. Like, like that shit. Yeah. Uh, I see you speak online about Dr. Sebi. I probably don't know as much as a lot of people know about his teachings, uh, even though I hear a lot of people talking about him. In your comments, someone said that he was killed by the pharmaceutical companies. You said, exactly. Can you talk to me about the knowledge that you got on Dr. Sebi? And do you have a theory on what actually happened to him? All right, to get to the theory, I wasn't there. I don't know for sure, but this is my take, and I stand on it. This is one of the most healthy people, you know what I'm saying, period. You know what I mean? I ain't saying in the planet, but just in general. Mm -hmm. So to to be briefed and for them motherfuckers to just to say, yo, he went in the cell. We took him off a plane because he had too much money in his pocket, for one. Mm. That's crazy. We took him off a plane because he had too much money, an 84-year-old man, or his mid-80s. Mm -hmm. We put him in a hole and cell overnight, and we woke up, and he died from leukemia in, in a very hot place. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's over. You know what I'm saying? Right. When, when shit gets, when shit is that undetailed, 
I'm a leery person. I'm not right. a person you can just tell me something. And I say, yeah, that's how it really happened because they right. said it. I'm, I'm not that nigga, man. Right. So, like, I, that shit don't sit with me. You know what I'm saying? As far as the teaching go, the teachings go, he was the one that pulled me over, like, the plant-based eating. I lost somebody that was extremely close to me from health issues. I start fishing, and then I stumped. When I started seeing what he was saying, I applied it. And when that shit started working, I'm like, oh, nah, I can never go back. You know what I'm saying? And for anybody who want to know, I'm going to tell them. If you don't want to know, it's cool, too. You know what I'm saying? So I hold it like that. Appreciate that. Appreciate that insight. Um, Question. I see you on a joint with Sheik Loot. Uh, and I knew you, you grew up on the locks, you said. Uh, Sheik yeah. said Jada hit him up and said that you was fire. Um, he said you was a mix between Snoop and M.O.P. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, what I, which I thought was kind of brilliant when they said that. What's it like to get uh, a stamp from the locks? Man, that shit is big. Like, like they're my DNA. Everybody got a DNA. I, I, like, when somebody, when an artist in particular says, like, yo, I'm self-made, I got my own style, like, you got your own style because you're a mixture of other people. Then you put yourself in. Something along those lines. Like, nobody is just fresh out of the air. It's dumb. You know what I'm saying? Every, right. We all got influence. So I definitely salute them because they definitely in my DNA. And, and they kept a lane open for niggas like me and us. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I definitely salute them. You been out to any one of uh, Styles P juice bars? I know he do the juice thing. Have you been every, out there? Every time I'm in New York shit. And that shit, I'm guessing that shit is legit. What's the what's your favorite thing to order out of out of uh, Styles P joint? I get the custom shit. So yo, I throw the mango, the blueberry, the sea moss, the goji berries, no honey, a little bit of peaches, and that's how I'm rocking. Know what I mean, so they, do they put that in the blender? Do they add milk or water to that? Like they can, but I don't. They got like almond water and all that. I mean almond milk and all that. But I, I don't do none of that. I just keep it plain. Okay. Um, on your Twitter, you said, this is a quote from your Twitter. Hit me. Acupuncture for the win. Man, for what? The, what? For the fucking win. Acupuncture. Yo, yo, you know what be fucking my head up? Like, yo, we don't, we don't get pushed to do none of this healthy shit. You know what I'm saying? So, my, like, me, me trying to not mean reach the other shit that I know that I, I've never done and, and need to try. Just trying to expand my mind. I got into that shit. Like, fuck it, give it a try. Man, that shit crazy, B. Yeah. And just, yeah. just the whole science of how that shit work. That shit crazy. That shit crazy, man. Do you do the, the uh, cupping thing, too? Yo, the acupuncture lady actually did that. She hit me with, like, 17 and a half needles, and then it was certain, certain spots. She used the little cup shit sat. That shit was crazy, yo. So, uh, it's a lot of rappers out there who talk to me about how they want to connect with some of the hot names in the game right now. Um, can you offer some advice to, to some of the spitters out there about how you get the attention of some of these dudes? Like, how, like how does a, something like, um, like how, how the Sheik thing came about? Like, how, do you, how did a, a young up-and-coming guy get the attention of, like, people they want to collab with? It... Focus on yourself, and, and or if you with a team, focus on you and your team. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, yo, the ugly truth is, regardless of how much you know, what I mean, we love music and shit. This still is a business. Yeah. So, so like, it's not gonna be a lot of people that's on these upper echelon, these high levels and shit that just say, you know what, I'm gonna fuck with you, homie. I'm gonna fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? They want to know that they bring in some worth to somebody that's doing something. You know what I mean? It's understandable. You know what I mean? So, like, focus on yourself. Get your shit popping. Get your name ringing. You know what I mean? Like, when, when, like, you should never be an artist that say niggas is sleeping on you. If you think like that, you got to erase that. You fucked up already. You know what I mean? Because if somebody's sleeping, you not doing enough. Right, and that's right. just what it comes down to. So keep banging, and then network. Networking is a big thing. You can't just, you know what I'm saying, act like your music is gonna connect all the dots, man. You gotta know that, you know what I mean. You gotta network with people. You gotta reach out. You gotta have some people in your corner. And shit. I definitely appreciate. It. People need to hear that. People need to hear that. Um, in the video for Dust Till Dawn, 
Whose idea was it for you to be dragging a dead body through the woods in a garbage bag? <laughs> what idea was that? That was mine. That was definitely mine. That was crazy. First of all, you're dragging a dead body. Shocking enough. Do you stand on top of that dead body and spit some bars? Yeah. What was where that where that come from? Like, what made you go there? Um, it was the feeling. It was the feeling, you know what I'm saying? And I, and that video like had to get that wasn't the original idea. I kinda had to spend some quick shit because that was the time when Dog Low got arrested. And he mm -hmm. was on that song. So I'm like, yo, we still gonna have to put this out, you know what I mean? Just to give people more visuals and shit. So I just had to figure out a way to link my shit in with gate shit. So that's what came to me and shit. And for the record, Poppy was not in that bag, right? Nah, man. Okay. Poppy is Poppy is chilling. He good good dude, man. We we good now. Good. That's what's up. <laughs> that's what's good up. Now. Uh, is there any uh, stress knowing that you're one of the nicest, uh, but you're in the lane that don't get the proper amount of attention? Is that stressful at all? Nah, that, that ain't no stress. I just got to do more, and I got to do more things that make it exciting for more people to buy in. You know what I'm saying? We got to get some women over here in this lane. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm, know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot of things a lot of things to be done. That's another reason I'm working out. You know what I'm saying? Let's get this shit together. But nah. Just got put in the work, yo. That's that's all I feel, put in the work. I think a lot of us be boxed in and then like certain supporters like, yo, I like this dude, I like this dude, and they like you for doing one thing. And a lot of artists be like, all right, I'm just going to keep doing this same kind of shit, this same kind of beef. And I think that's what caused a lot of shit to be stagnant in the underground. Like, yo, you got to gotta, gotta raise the ball, man. Like, yeah. raise the motherfucker, you know what yeah. I mean? Hey, um, you... I want to talk to about your philosophy of, about money. Now, the 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 song "Cream," yeah, which is a a, a homage of sorts to Wu Tang Clan. Obviously, uh, you yeah. even shot in front of a, a Wu Tang mural. Um, the yeah. chorus is "Cash ruined everything around me." Yeah. Um, can you expound on that? Um, before we get into that second verse, like your philosophy about money. Yeah, it's like it's so much music and so much shit in the air these days are like what good that money brings. I mean, like, yeah, buy you this. It got this chick on you and put it in this car. It put me in this car and it got me this crib. It's true and that shit is cool. But I think I was feeling like shit is unbalanced and we don't talk enough about the negatives that I'm saying that money costs. So yeah. I just spent it that way, you know what I mean? Just to touch on some negatives. Um. In that song, you say, my grandmother is your mother. I want to make sure I'm saying the lyrics right. My grandmother is your mother. And then you talk about how this person um, put her up in the home and spent all her checks. Um, that's yeah. brutally honest. So, uh, salute to you for being able to bear your soul on a track like that. Are you able to go into detail about um, that particular situation that you speak about? Like, who, did you, who was you addressing that verse to? I mean... I ain't going to go crazy in depth, man, in depth, but I touch on it. You know what I'm saying? That shit still kind of rattled me to this day. But, like, the, the particular person that I was talking about, what I said in the story, that's what occurred. You know what I'm saying? From from where I was standing and, and seeing everything play out, my somebody that I love dearly was used and abused in their weakest state. And it's crazy because... No exaggeration, hundreds of people, hundreds of people DM me and say, yo, I went through that with my grandma. I went through that with my aunt. I went through that with my mom. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It was just a real, real nasty, fucked up situation. You know what I mean? It was fucked up. And how did the, 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 how your family feel about you putting that kind of stuff on wax? I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, it was true. This mm -hmm. wasn't an, it wasn't an opinion, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I like when the person I was talking about, my grandmother, when she was alive, we had a family unit. Like when she transitioned, don't have a family unit no more. Like I don't, I don't really even deal with my bloodline like that. It's a certain few, you know what I'm saying, but I don't give a fuck how anybody feels. True. I went through the same thing. You know what I mean? It's always. 
it's, it's a shame what we have not learned from the matriarchs and, and patriarchs in our family. It's a shame uh, how we came up and all the stuff that we saw and we didn't learn from these people because, you know, I had, um, I'm going to just say Aunt Maybell. Um, for people that's in my family that might watch this show, they know who I'm talking about. It used to be at her house, right? You know, the Thanksgiving, the, um, the Christmas and all that other kind of stuff. And then, of course, you know, when she went away, shit broke apart like cats ain't know how to you know get that shit done it was it's like the movie soul food you know what i mean um so i definitely can relate to that how you know people just splinter and you're not close with a lot of the family no more i'm in the kind of same same kind of position right now um talk to me about (laughs) i see you do (laughs) in the video for easy I see you doing push-ups and dips. The workout shit is is very serious for you. So how um, is this? A, is an everyday thing? How many hours a day is you working out? Um, I'm sticking to five days a week, two days off. Sometimes I do six, but like, you know what I mean, like an hour and a half. It depends what we're doing. Like Wednesdays, in the middle of the week, we will do like cardio shit, hit the beach, throw sandbags, all kind of shit. Other times, you know what I mean, we just work on other shit. Yeah, because um, I know the one video, it was, that it was a vlog. It said, no days off. So you bust it. You take it two days off. I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just practicing nah, that, my, my that, investigative yo, reporting. That, nah, you right, though. But that no days off, man, mentally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I That's got you. what it felt. I got you. <laughs> I'm just well, open like one day maybe if I I'm just working on like busting people. So maybe if I get Trump to sit down, I get practicing like busting people. But um <laughs> what albums are you bumping on repeat right now? Man, I'm bumping this cloth tape that's about to drop. You know what I'm saying? I'm when is this cloth dropping? I'm looking I'm looking for the end of April. You know what I'm saying? Just I wanna make sure that Everything is where it need to be as far as, I mean, videos and shit. And all the I's is dotted and shit. And make sure it drop how it's supposed to drop because it's going to shake the earth a little bit. How did the cloth come together? Shit. Um, 2020, 2012, you know what I'm saying? We formed. It was uh, Illy, Illy, Illy had the idea, you know what I mean, to pull us together because we was already all linked, all, all fucking with each other. Some of us is family, like, you know what I mean? Mav is... Uh, Mav and Gates is cousins. Know what I'm saying me and Mav is family. Uh, Synth and Illy is cousins. Mm. And uh, I mean, Mooch is my brother with no blood, but my brother. And I'm saying at times. What does the cloth refer to? Uh, it refers to a lot, but know what I'm saying it's it's the original. Know what I mean, like like the foundation of what don't really exist that much no more. Know what Got I'm you. saying. Got you. And um. Favorite MC from the eighties? Mm, cool G rap. Oh my God! Yes, that's a winner. Um, do you pay attention to numbers at all in terms sure. of view counts, the analytics behind the scene on the YouTube, or how many streams? Do you pay attention to any of that? Partially, I try to pay attention to it when it matters. Cause like, I see it. I see it like this. I see some artists that they're fucking have uh, 200,000 followers and shit, but they couldn't sell 100 hoodies. Mm. They, could, they couldn't fill up a, a venue that has a max capacity of 1,500. And I know artists personally that got 4,500 motherfucking followers and they could pack out a fucking spot for 1500 So, like, I, I'm not one of them dudes where numbers equate to success when it right. comes to views and followers. Like, so I, I partially, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, so I go with it. Um, you, I know you have a, a philosophy about not wanting to be like nobody, which is obviously understandable. Where did that urge to be completely in your own lane uh, originate from? Cause I used to always feel like an outcast when I was young. Like I felt like I never really fitted in nothing. Even when I tried to like be a part of shit, I felt like, you know what I mean? I don't belong here. Yeah. So and I was like, oh, it's a reason for that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stand out, you know what I mean? Bring something new to the fold. Be something different as a person, a rapper, whatever. You know what I mean? Be different. 
I mean, I relate to that. And I'm going to tell this little short ass story. My girl always laugh at me when I tell her his story. And people are going to be shocked when I say this shit. I done had all type of, I done probably lived three different lives. But one of the things I used to do, because I was a smart uh, kid, like I'm sure you was as well, um, I fancied myself to be very intelligent. I wanted to be like a business dude when I was coming up. So when I was 14, I used to have these outfits. I had these uh, silk shirts and these slacks, and I used to go, go to school with a briefcase. You know what I mean? Outcast shit. You know what I mean? And yeah. motherfuckers was I was never popular. Niggas didn't fuck with me. So um I could appreciate the the impetus of you wanting to, to be in your own lane. Uh and it's 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 better over here. You know what I mean? It's better when you buy yourself. It's it, it's always a a lot of people. It, I'll give you an example. Somebody would say, when I used to mess with rappers, I used to manage some some groups, I used to spit, produce, all this other right. So I'm not gonna say what this dude's name is, but he used to say to me, um, yo, everybody said this shit is fire. And I'm like, them is like, yes, man. You know what I mean? They, they, they always just going to tell you what you want to hear. Like you want to, you want that honesty from your people and people very, have a hard time accepting that. It's so much easier to be in that pack of people when everybody doing the same shit. It's far more difficult than to carve out your own and then just stick to it. Um, I respect that point of view that you, that you bring out. Um, before I ask you this last question, I want to make sure I'm getting all these projects right. I got them taped up over here because you got a lot of work out there. A lot of work. Um, the albums, okay. I got samples, the fixed tape, that's with the cloth, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Calculated, the masterpiece, headshots with Dark Low, right? Mm -hmm. A piece of the action, death to all haters. I got samples too, the only way out you did with Mooch, and another album called Roach. Right. Um did I miss any albums? Nah, the um the masterpiece, that's not me. It's another artist that's named Riggs that's all dwindled in my algorithm. So they still ain't pulled that shit out even though I didn't emailed them ninety times and shit. You emailed this other fake Riggs? Nah, I emailed the, the um people Spotify, I mean the um Band camp? Pull it off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got you. Okay. So masterpiece. Let me cross that off my list. And I'm gonna go hunt down this other nigga and find out what his issue is. Hey, what can we expect? <laughs> what can we expect from uh Riggs and the cloth? I know you said you got an album coming in, in, in April. What else can we expect to see from the cloth and Riggs in the, in the next six months to a year? I mean in August. End of August, I mean mid August, this is the fixed tape, the second one, the full group joint, that's coming. Most about to drop, <clears throat> most about to drop in two weeks. My main LP gonna come sometime right after that. You know what I mean? And, um times cause it's gonna be a lot, yo. It's gonna yeah. be a lot. You know y'all stay y'all staying working then. That's what's up. Yeah, what really fucked everything up is like when when the political matters or, or the or the protesting and when COVID came, like people weren't processing music the same and for good reason. You know what I'm saying? It was a right. lot of shit going on. So like, right. a lot of shit just got hard to you know what I mean? Right. Okay, we're gonna definitely be looking forward to that. Riggs, I thank you so much for again uh offering up uh, time in your busy schedule to come and talk to us for the benefit of the people that watch the Mike Power Show um, is a big deal for me. And I know that years from now, I'm going to be looking back and like, yo, remember when I talked to Riggs now before he got real big? So I appreciate what you do. I appreciate the lyrics, the seriousness of what you bring to the table, the essence of what the fuck you do. Because yes, you do remind me of Nas when I listen to your shit. You remind me of how I felt when I first heard Nas. Um, that the honesty the attention to detail in terms of the wordplay and the respect for the fan. You don't like the word fan. Respect for the fans uh, by the way you put your music together. It shows that you got a certain amount of respect for us and you know what the fuck you're doing. So thank you uh, for showing up uh, to the Mike Power Show and I wish you nothing but success and blessings, sir. No question. And let me salute you back, man, because like I said, make sure they see this. I reached out to this man. He didn't reach out to me. You know what I'm saying? I reached out to him because I wanted to get on your platform because what you're doing right now is what nobody is doing. You know the music. You get familiar with the artist. You're asking more questions than, well, what got you started with rapping? You know what I'm saying? Right. The regular textbook shit like, yeah. yo, 
the detail and, and I'm saying the integrity of how you going about this shit. I hope your shit blow. You need anything from me, anybody I fuck with, they going to pull up for you because I'm going to tell them they got to. You know what I mean? Riggs, thank, I just got to, you know, I always do this. I always send that emoji. I'm going to do that to you over the screen. The the blessing that you just gave me, the stamp you just gave me, it, it, that's going to make my day. It's Friday. I'm going to go eat something that I'm not supposed to eat. That's how I like to <laughs> That's how I like to celebrate. Don't don't at me, Riggs. I'm just I'm trying to live, man. <laughs> nah, hey, man. you ain't living with that shit, man. Nah, you dying with that shit. I'm, I'm gonna give you that like, recipe. Give me that. Yeah, I'm, I'm before the end of the night. I'm gonna be in your DM like, yo, shoot me that recipe. But I'm about to fuck with something fried tonight. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I ain't no gonna cool. lie. Though. I'm gonna fuck with something fried, but uh, thank you for that for that stamp and that seal of approval. It actually means a, a whole lot to me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, hold you to that because I'm gonna be in your DMs like, yo, I need to talk to this guy, this guy, this guy. And of course, I want to try to find a way to get the whole cloth on here. Um, I don't know how it's gonna work on the screen or whatever, but I, I, I really want to work that out. Is that something you think maybe we could do in the future? Get everybody from the cloth on one screen and and talk to y'all at the same time. Yo, if you figure out a time and you figure out how the shit gonna work, if it work on this shit, you gonna be the first one to get that interview. I don't wanna get out to nobody. Thank you, you just, sir. You know what I mean? Just figure that shit out, how we gotta do it, and I, I'll line it up. Got you. Thank you so much. I thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend. And all of y'all out there, make sure y'all be on the lookout for everything that Riggs got. Papa 585 is in the building, and the cloth is coming for you. So I appreciate you. Have a great day, sir. Thank you. Oh, likewise, homie. Peace.